All right, so I'm a little bit of a weather nerd. <clears throat> Not to the point that I go around chasing storms or anything silly like that. But since I've been down here, we get such impressive rainstorms, I've become fascinated with just the speed at which rain happens and then the total volume that we get. I think the highest rainfall amount I've ever seen on this thing rate was like 12 or 13 inches an hour for a few minutes. Um, six to eight inches an hour is very common down here during thunderstorms. And, uh, you know, I like temperature, humidity, all that stuff. And I bought this a few years ago before a hurricane that fizzled because I was interested in seeing what we had. And it's not a bad little unit. It's a Davis Vantage View. Product number 6357, model number 6250. It came with that little uh, readout that I have sitting on my desk over there. Nothing terribly impressive about it, but it works. It has the ability to hook to the internet. I haven't done that yet, but uh, the issue with it is it's got a little battery in it, which is right here. See if we can do this. It just unscrews. And this is a CR123 battery. It's a little three volt lithium. It's not rechargeable. Um, but this thing is not supposed to really need this. That's a backup in case the solar panel or it's not sunny enough to charge what is supposedly a big capacitor in this thing and so over the last year it lasted for about a year and then i got a little battery warning so it's like okay so i put a new battery in it and that lasted about a month and i got another little battery warning it's like all right well that sucks so I put another battery in it, and then that lasted a few weeks, and I got a little battery warning. It's like, okay, something's wrong. So I started doing some digging, and apparently there is a 10 farad, 10 full farad capacitor on a board in here that is supposed to get charged by the solar panel to run this thing overnight instead of having to use the battery. Battery is, again, only for when that solar panel doesn't last long enough, so it's not supposed to be used all that much. But that capacitor has apparently failed. And so what I'm going to do now, since I have a couple of them, they were fairly cheap, like seven, eight bucks for that pack of five, <clears throat> I'm going to attempt to disassemble this thing without ruining it and find the board that has that capacitor on it and see if I can unsolder it and solder a new one on. So, first thing we're going to do, we're going to disassemble all the fairly loose stuff off the bottom. This is the little rain cup. Probably give this a good cleaning. When I put it back together, might as well get this off of there. Not much to it. It's uh, you know fairly fairly empty inside. I don't really see where the board might be, but what I do see is a bunch of Phillips screws around the bottom. So we're going to try to pop that off. I think the first thing I'm going to do, though, is I'm going to pop this off, which I think is related to temperature and humidity. Again, those are some... I don't know if I have to remove this. But if it's got wires on it, I need to understand what's going to... That's a screw. What's going to take when this thing comes apart, what's going to be left? And just in case these screws are actually 
all the way through. Okay, so that was just that's a shield for a sensor, which looks reasonably clean. A few bugs. <laughs> oh man, these stupid fake ladybugs. I hate those things. They are nasty. Smell like heck. But, uh, so that's all I see that can get disconnected from the bottom. So now I'm going to start pulling the screws that look like they hold the thing together. See if I can get at this electronics board. Okay, so I got those four screws out. <laughs> that seems to be allowing it to <laughs> no kidding. <laughs> Come apart. Now we gotta find the capacitor. <laughs> There's the solar panel. That's the anemometer magnet, because it looks like that's there's, it's no contact, it's just a magnet. Battery holders in here. I see what looks like a board in here. So we're gonna pop this cover off. See what we got. Of course, it's a different style of screw. Don't see it yet. So the wires from the solar panel actually go into this thing. So we're going to pop that off and see if there may be a little board in there. There's the wind direction unit. Oy. And that is fully potted. So this unit doesn't look like it's repairable. Which is truly disappointing, because this thing wasn't cheap. This was not inexpensive. That is disappointing. put those back in there and then do a little bit more research. All right, so I'm a little disappointed that this doesn't seem to have any good way to repair it. But there's a company in England that sells this whole 7345.916 thing, which comes with this potted unit, all the wiring, the battery case here, and this and there's a wire going to that it looks like see if I can figure out how to pop it out of there yep, yep okay now we pop it out of there without breaking it looks like there are a couple of clips they're not the easiest thing in the world to pull. Oh, there she goes. Crash. Okay. Uh -huh. And there is a board in here. Which also does not have my capacitor on it. And which is also 100% potted in goo. So, that's rather disappointing. Alright, so, apparently this one is the cheap one. The pro version is the one that has the replaceable capacitors. This one has a cap in the system some damn where, but who knows where. So, since I can't break it more than I already have, I think what I'm going to do, take one of these beauties, 
and solder it in parallel with the solar panel, which I did take outside and is producing some little bit of voltage in this cloudy day. So, hey, most that can happen is I blow the cap up and throw this thing in the garbage and be disappointed that I wasted 400 bucks that only lasted a year or two. So, that's what we're going to try now. We're going to go get my soldering stuff and I'm going to try to put one of these capacitors in parallel across the solar panel, which should definitely charge it. And the solar panel does run it when the battery's dead. So, who knows? I'll let you know. There she is. No idea whether that's going to work or not. I'm sure some of the elect chickens out there will let me know. But again, that will absolutely charge it. And like I said, the solar panel does supply power when the battery's dead. So if that thing can then supply the power when, you know, overnight instead of the battery, who knows? It probably has some sort of circuitry in there to, I don't know, whatever. But now I'm going to put it all back together. And I think I've got a new battery on the way. Put that in, put it up. See what happens. I'll let you know. All right, so we released the unit back to the wild, and it has just relinked with the home base. Uh, so I didn't break it, but we will see if that cap does what I want it to do. And if it doesn't, I'm not sure how much more creative I'm going to be able to get, given that all the circuit boards are potted. Um, so, we'll keep you posted.